Saturday afternoon in Toronto, Cito Gaston and the Blue Jays hosting the Texas Rangers. In the top of the second inning, Jimmy Key gives up two singles, and then he walks Steve Buschel to load up the bases. And with two outs, Key strikes out Jeff Kunkel on that outside pitch to end the inning. Jimmy Key pitching out of a jam in the top of the second. In the bottom of the second inning, Kevin Brown, who's making the start for the Rangers, will strike out the side. And here he gets Manny Lee to go down swinging for his fourth strikeout of the game. We move now to the bottom of the fourth inning. This game still scoreless. Julio Franco making the nice hustling play to get Fred McGriff at first base after Brown deflected the ground ball toward the mound. Umpire Rocky Rowe right there to make the out call. It's the second out of the inning. And we'll take one more look at this play. Franco making the nice hustling play, but it looks like McGriff may have just beaten the throw to first base. In the bottom of the fifth inning, the base is loaded and two outs. Kevin Brown will pitch out of the jam as he gets Tony Fernandez to go down looking to end the inning. It's his seventh strikeout of the game. Brown struck out eight in this one as he brought a shutout into the ninth. Brown allowed only five hits through the first eight innings as you take a look at newly acquired John Candelaria as he looks on in the Toronto bullpen. In the top of the eighth inning with two outs, John Russell breaks up the scoreless tie. He doubles down the third base line off Jim Acker. Julio Franco comes in to score, and it's one to nothing Texas. RBI number six on the season for Russell. And that forced Cito Gaston to make a call to the bullpen. John Candelaria making his first appearance with Toronto. Harold Baines takes the first pitch he sees by Candelaria into left field for a single. Russell comes in to score, and it's two to nothing Rangers. Watch this double play in the top of the ninth by Toronto with one out and a man on third base. Tony Fernandez fields pinch hitter Jeff Eusen's ground ball. Gets Gary Pettis in a rundown between third base and home plate. He's tagged out by Greg Myers. Myers makes the throw to first base to get Eusen for the double play to end the inning as Fred McGriff makes the tag at first. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Fred McGriff leading off for Toronto. He breaks up the shutout for Kevin Brown with his 23rd home run of the season. Shot to deep center field, and it's 2-1 to one, Texas. It's 55th RBI of the year. Still in the bottom of the ninth, nobody out. Pat Ford is with a pinch hit ground rule double to right field off Kenny Rogers. Pinch runner Kenny Williams comes in to score, and it's tied up at two apiece. RBI number 33 on the season for Borders, and that would send this game into extra innings. And in the top of the 13th with two outs, Harold Baines is the hero. He hits a solo home run to deep center field on the first pitch he sees from Frank Wills to make it 3-2 to two Rangers. His 10th home run of the year is 38th RBI. That would be the final score as Texas hangs on for the win in 13 innings. Brett Onsberg, the winning pitcher, is 4-1. Frank Wills takes the loss. He's 5-3. John Barfield picking up his first save. England, the Indians hosting the New York Yankees. Mel Hodder had his number retired tonight in Cleveland. He spent 36 years in a Cleveland uniform as a player and a coach, and he won 223 career games. As you take a look at some of the Yankee old-timers, the equitable old-timers playing before the game tonight. In the top of the second inning, funny play. Matt Noakes with a ground ball to first base. It's knocked down by Jeff Manto. He makes the bad throw to first. Sandy Alomar Jr. is backing up the play. He throws to Tom Candiotti at first base. Noakes stumbling as he goes back to first. He heads towards second, and he's tagged out by Tom Candiotti. Deion Sanders expanding his career ventures. He not only plays football and baseball, but he also thumb wrestles with Mike Witt in the dugout. In the top of the third inning, Oscar Azokar with the single to left field. Candy Maldonado will make the perfect throw home to get Bob Guerin at home plate. Alomar making the tag. We'll take another look at this great throw by Candy Maldonado for the Indians. He makes the strong throw to home plate. Bob Guerin is out by a mile as Sandy Alomar Jr. applies the tag. In the bottom of the third inning with two outs, Sandy Alomar Jr. at the plate. He picks up his fifth home run of the season, a solo shot to left field off Chuck Carey. And the Indians take a one to nothing lead. Chuck Carey upset with himself as he made just one big mistake so far this evening. We move now to the top of the fourth inning. Tom Candiotti wins his sixth straight decision over the Yankees tonight. He allowed four hits in eight innings with five strikeouts. And there in the top of the fourth, he gets Jim Leritz to go down swinging. In the bottom of the fourth inning, Chuck Carey strikes out the side. He gets Jeff Manto to go down looking. Carey is winless in his last seven starts. He struck out seven and six and a third innings tonight. He took the loss and fell to four and seven. In the top of the sixth inning with two outs, Oscar Azokar will tie this game up at one apiece. He hits his third home run of the year, a solo shot to right field off of Candiotti. It's all tied up at one, the lone Yankee run tonight. 
In the bottom of the sixth inning, the base is loaded for the Indians. They have a great opportunity with nobody out. Corey Snyder with a shot down the left field line. It lands right near the line. Umpire Larry Young says it's foul. We'll take another look at it. It's too close to call. Nonetheless, it was called a foul ball. And Chuck Carey pitched out of that bases loaded jam. In the bottom of the seventh with two outs. With the bases loaded, Alan Mills walks Brooke Jacoby. In comes Mitch Webster with the winning run as it's 2-1 Cleveland. That'll be the final Candiotti. The winning pitcher is 11-6. Doug Jones picks up his 27th save. Saturday night in Montreal, Buck Rogers and the Expos are hosting the Chicago Cubs. In the bottom of the first inning with two outs, Tim Raines will put Montreal on top one to nothing with his third home run of the season, a solo shot to right field off Mike Bilecki. It's one to nothing Expos. RBI number 36 on the season for Reigns. In the bottom of the second inning with two outs, Delano DeShields will double to right field. Mike Fitzgerald scores to put Montreal up three to nothing. His 19th RBI of the season as he goes into second base just ahead of Andre Dawson's throw. That was all from Mike Bilecki in this one as he lasted only one and two thirds of an inning. In the top of the fourth inning with two outs with Andre Dawson on second base on DeShields throwing error, Dave Clark will single to center field, bringing home Dawson, and it's 3-1 to one Expos. In the top of the sixth, the Cubs score five times. Luis Salazar's RBI single ties it up at three apiece. With one out in the bases loaded, Sean Dunson gets his second triple of the game. A shot off the center field wall. Mark Grace, Dave Clark, and Luis Salazar all scoring, and it's 6-3 to three Cubs. As Dunston brings his RBI total to 50 on the season, and Joe Girardi sacrificed by put Chicago up 7-3. to three. But in the bottom of the sixth, the Expos come back with four runs of their own. Runners on first and third and nobody out. Mike Fitzgerald at the plate. And he'll single to center field. Andre Scalaraga comes in to score and it's now 7-4 to four Cubs. As Fitzgerald picks up his 25th RBI on the year. Still in the bottom of the sixth with one out. Delino DeShields will make it 7-6 to six Cubs as he lines a double to center field. That brings home Fitzgerald, 7-6 to six Chicago on DeShield's 20th RBI of the season. Marquise Grissom's RBI ground out tied this game up at 7 apiece. The Cubs would win this one in the top of the ninth with two outs runners on first and second. Luis Salazar's ground ball to DeShield's. And he bobbles the ball. That allows Ryan Sandberg to score from second base, and the Cubs go up 8-7. to seven. Sean Dunson tied a major league record in this game with three triples. He tied the record for triples last accomplished by Craig Reynolds of Houston on May 16, 1981. Here he gets his third triple of the game. Marvell Wynn and Luis Salazar scoring, and that makes it 10-7 to Cubs. That'll be the final score. Bill Long, the winning pitcher, is 4-0. Tim Burke takes the loss. He falls to 1-2. Evening from Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Pirates are hosting the Philadelphia Phillies. Picking up action in the top of the third. No score, two outs, and no on. A great play coming up here by Pittsburgh starter John Smiley. Lenny Dykstra at the plate, and he hits a line drive right back at Smiley. Wits the deck, but makes the grab in self-defense. A great play by Smiley. He gets the glove up just in time and takes the line drive away from his face and a base hit away from Lenny Dykstra. One more look at this really nice play by John Smiley. Dykstra with a vicious line drive right back at Smiley's face. He gets the glove up and makes the grab. To the top of the fourth, still no score, two outs and no on. Vaughn Hayes at bat against Smiley. And Hayes takes Smiley deep to right field to give the Philadelphia Phillies a one to nothing lead. For Vaughn Hayes, that's his 10th home run on the season. It's also his first extra base hit since June 4th of this year. A base on balls later to Carmelo Martinez brought the other Hayes, Charlie Hayes, to the plate in the top of the fourth. And he deposits a two-run dinger to left center field off of John Smiley. It's his third home run in three straight games. And that gives the Philadelphia Phillies a three to nothing lead. For third baseman Charlie Hayes, that's home run number nine on the season. Moving on to the bottom of the fourth, the Pirates would get on the scoreboard when Bobby Bonilla would lead off the inning with a solo blast to left field off Philadelphia starter Bruce Ruffin. That would make the score 3-1 to one Philadelphia. For Bobby Bonilla, this is his 21st home run of the season. The Pirates would add another run to make the score 3-2 to two Philadelphia on an R.J. Reynolds pinch hit single in the bottom of the seventh. We move to the bottom of the eighth. Andy Van Slyke at the plate, and he will lead off with a solo home run to right center field off of Philadelphia reliever Jeff Parrott, and this will tie the game up at three all. For Andy Van Slyke, who has been in a slump of late, this is his tenth home run of the season. In the top of the ninth, one out, runners at first and third. 
Darren Dalton at bat against Pittsburgh reliever Bill Landrum. Dalton slaps a fielder's choice to third base. Pirate third baseman Jeff King opts to try to get the double play. They do not as Charlie Hayes scores on the fielder's choice 5-4. to four. That would prove to be the winning run as Philadelphia beats Pittsburgh by the final of 4-3. to three. The winning pitcher in relief is Jeff Parrott. He's 4-9. Losers Bill Landrum. He's 3-2. And, and Joe Baver picked up his second save with Philadelphia in 10th of the season.